Hi, she was seven and back. So today I'm going to talk about dating using the law of attraction. Okay. A lot of people know what the law of attract law of law of attraction is. You know, it's you know attracting what you want by having positive thoughts or visualizing or thinking something and then it's gonna come to you. Okay. So when I was younger I used to date using the law of attraction as i got older i used it more and more okay um so i'm going to give y'all some techniques and how it works and how it worked for me and maybe a little short story time so when i was young maybe 20 years ago 19 years ago when i was in my prime and i was going out to the clubs and dancing and stuff like that um my sister and her friends and i would all go out as a group we were like, we were fabulous. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so we all used to go out as a group and we would only go to certain clubs, okay? First of all, the law of attraction that we would um, kind of use is making a list, okay? We would say, okay, we're gonna, we're only gonna talk to these type of men. We're gonna get the guys with the most money to buy us drinks. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We're all. We're gonna meet. Our goal tonight is to meet someone to pay for all our drinks, a celebrity or something. Blah, 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 blah. So we would all make these plans before we went out. Okay, this was. <laughs> we didn't go out without a purpose. Okay, and I was just the young one, so I was just following along. I wasn't making the. I wasn't calling the shots. That was my sister. She. She's like ten times. <laughs> worse than me. Okay, so she would make all the plans and we would execute them okay we would all have a part to play so through the law of attraction okay i would say okay i'm going to to meet somebody that um has like a business or something or you know owns their own company and da, 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 da. and then she would be like okay i'm going to meet an athlete or a celebrity and then my other friend would be like okay i'll meet someone who you know <laughs> My other friend was always attracted to like the drug dealers and the shady thugs, but they had money. You know what I'm saying? The illegal people. She was always attracted to them for some reason. I don't know why, but she was. So we let her roll with it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so when we got to the club, we would all spread up, break up and go walk around. And whoever met the richest guy <laughs> would then say, oh, you know, I have two friends. And, you know, we were all looking good. And so... The smile that would get on the man's face when he saw two more, you know, very attractive women walk up was like, oh my God, I'm in heaven. And of course, he's going to all buy us all drinks for the rest of the night. Okay, you know that, right? Um, so that's what we would do. We would manifest before we got in the club what we were going to do. It was a plan. We would seek it out. We would already be subconsciously prepared to, um, you know, pick out the certain types of people it would be um you know since we were attracting it the men would actually sometimes you know seek us out or we would run into them in an unexpected way or whatever you know what i'm saying but it always worked so if you go out by yourself or with a group of girls always make a, a plan visualize yourself meeting the certain type of man that you want to meet for the night or for a lifetime you don't have to use this for golding and you can use it to find a mate a spouse i did it when i was older but um, this is what you can do. You can make your list, say, okay, tonight I'm gonna be meet a man that's financially stable, not married, you know, funny, um, blah, 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 blah. But if you make the list too long, you're gonna limit, you're gonna limit yourself and what's out there. So keep the list a little bit broad, but keep the main standards that you cannot live without, okay? Like money, financially stable, career, you know, whatever whatever make sure those are in place above anything else because anything else you can you know you can deal with but have your plan now for guys the same thing before you go out i want to meet a woman with no kids i want to meet a woman who's educated i want to meet a woman who's uh you know ready to have a real relationship who doesn't play games i want to you know i want to meet one that's decent and pretty or whatever have that in your mind, okay? That way that's what you'll attract and you're not gonna be looking at hoochies. That's what we used to call them back in the day, hoochies. Uh, <laughs> y'all see my age, I'm old. 
y'all you're not going to be looking at the type of women that doesn't fit that description you're going to bypass you're going to bypass and you're going to bypass until you see one that meets your standards and subconsciously you're going to do it anyway because you've programmed your mind to only attract those type of women you know so that's what's going to happen um and no offense to women with children okay i'm, I'm not trying to bash on you but at, you know when you're in the club and you're a young uh, professional male or whatever whatever you know you have certain standards okay you just do and if if one if the woman does have a child it's their option and their right to decide if they want to date someone like that or not just like as a woman it's your option and your right not to date men who have children so that's just what it is you know some guys are just okay with having you know one or two kids okay well they can't have over two kids and they have to be a certain age some men will not date women unless they have a certain amount of kids or the kids are of a certain age that's just it okay let's just be real okay so you can put it in your mind what you want to meet before you go out that's what you're going to attract okay um so that's i mean that's how i met my husband okay when i was I think I've told this story a thousand times, but I was like, you know what? I want to meet a man with money who's going to take care of me for the rest of my life. And but that's it. That's what I want. That's just what I want. You know? And every time I would go out, I wouldn't talk to no one unless they could do that. I really wouldn't. If they tried to approach me, if they tried to talk to me, I was like, okay, um, I don't date. You know, I, I, I like serious relationships. I'm not going to date you unless you can do this, 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 and that for me. And they would think I was crazy or joking, but I was perfectly honest and I was perfectly real they thought I was joking they tried again they you sure you don't want to date me and we can have so much fun and I, I'm not gonna pay all your bills but we can have a lot of fun I'm like well I, I can have fun by myself what I need is somebody to support me you know for now you know if you want to call me your girlfriend you're gonna have to have those responsibilities okay and I was dismissed a few times and and I don't blame them because <laughs> You know they weren't the right person for the job okay and then one day I was just you know sitting in the bar because my friend was the bartender and y'all see my story I was waiting because I was getting ready to go to work um, I had a phone call to wait for in order to go to my job which was at a funeral home and I did not have the key so I had to wait for the owner to get there in order for me to get in I was going to be embalming a body that night and so the bar was right around the corner from the funeral home, so I went to visit my friend. So she was bartending. We were talking. I was sitting there sipping on whatever I was drinking. And my husband walks over to me, you know. And by this time, I'm sick and tired of guys and, you know, not being able to meet my standards. I'm just going to be rude, okay. So I said, he's he, first of all. I didn't want to talk to him because he wasn't my type at all. He was not my type. Ladies, that's why I say don't get hung up on looks because that could be your husband. <laughs> um, so he was not my type at all. So I was going to dismiss him quick, right? I was going to be like, uh. So he was really smart. He, you know, real smart. He was like, hi, my name is such and such. Da, 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 da. He was like really proper and, you know, how you want a man to approach you, you know. Not, hey, baby, what's your name? You know, nothing like that. He was really proper. And so I was impressed by his properness, so I gave him two minutes. He had two minutes to offer to buy me a drink. If he didn't offer to buy me a drink in two minutes, I was going to dismiss him, right? So <laughs> he talked and talked and talked for about one minute and 30 seconds. Then I was getting, you know, I was getting kind of like, oh my God. So then he said, well, what are you drinking? Let me buy you a drink. I was like, okay, fine. You saved yourself. So he bought me a drink. <laughs> and so now I'm drinking. I, you know, I'll, I'll listen to his conversation because, you know, he's talking. He's doing most of the talking because I'm mysterious, right? I don't tell everything. So, um, I let him talk. I ask him questions like, first of all, I'm just glad I got the drink because, you know, that was the goal. Uh, <laughs> and so, then he had five minutes until, you know, or maybe until I finished my drink, maybe ten minutes to finish impressing me. If he didn't impress me, I was going to let him go. So I asked all the worst questions a woman could ask. What kind of what kind of work do you do? What kind of car do you drive? You know, are you married? Do you have kids? Or does this blah 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 blah? Okay. Um, 
So thinking it was gonna make him go away, right? Because he wasn't my type, right? And plus it was a test to see if he could do what I needed him to do, right? So he told me what he did. He gave me a card. I didn't even ask. I'm like, what? CEO, okay, owner, what? Oh, CEO, owner, whatever. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. everybody's a CEO these days. And then, I, and then, I, and then he said, well, oh, I, I work with, he named all these giant corporations. And he's like, I work with this. I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but okay. And I was like, okay, what kind of car do you drive? And I was just being rude on purpose, y'all. I was like, I don't know. It's the law of attraction. It must have been because this person should have been walking out, okay? Maybe he thought it was funny. Um, so he said, oh, I dropped that that convertible Benz out there, da 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 you know? And... I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. I just, I didn't even look out the window. I'm just like, okay, that's nice, convertible bands. It's, I don't know what year is it though. I didn't ask what year because that was, the, I didn't ask what year it was. The, it was brand new, basically. Okay, so I was like, okay. Um, well, I have to go to work. He's like, oh no, I want you to go out with me tonight. Let's go out somewhere. Let's go do something. The night is young. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't know you. You'll be a serial killer. And he's like, he gave me his cell phone, guys. He gave me a cell phone. He's like, here. If you don't feel safe, you can use this phone to call whoever you want, the police. You can call them now and tell them who you're with. Here's my number, here's my name, whatever. Whatever you need to do to feel safe. That's blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. So, he paid my tab. And I was like, okay, thank you. He said, okay, now let's go have some fun. I said, but wait, I gotta go to work. He's like, here, use my phone and call in. I'm like, well, I was gonna make, I'm, I have to make money, you know, I was gonna make, you know, this my, this amount of money. He gave me the money in my hand. Here, cash. I'm like, okay. Call in, he says, call in. I call in, I'm like, uh, I ain't coming to work. <laughs> and anyway, the guy was like, that's okay, cause I'm running late anyway, and I'm probably not gonna be there till da da da. So don't worry about it, I'll do it. It's like, okay, thank you, bye. And so we went out. So I went out to the parking lot, I might have to, extend this video past 15 minutes 16 minutes so I went out to the parking lot now walk he you know does a little remote click click so you see the lights flash on this bright yellow be I mean bright yellow bins like two-door convertible I don't even know what 500 SL I don't it was two, 2001 y'all I don't remember what it was whatever car that was I'm like oh my god this bright yellow I did not I was impressed by the car, but I did not like the color. I'm like, yellow? <laughs> I was like, wow, yellow? Like, I was, like, I act a little bit impressed, but I was like, why did you choose yellow, you know? Oh, so everybody can see me. I'm bright and I'm flashy. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he said, I was, I just felt like a, fr a pop of color because I've drove, driven white cars, black cars, gray cars. I just wanted something different. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. And so, he gave me his phone. He said, call whoever you need to call, tell him where you're going, who you're with, blah, 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 safety first. So I call my sister and I tell her, oh, I met this guy, his name's James, this is his number. Da, da, da. I gave him the license plate on the car, like, you know, safety first, you know. So I got in his car, I'm a grown woman, yeah, I'm grown, I'm going on a date, you know. <laughs> he gave me his car, information phone, I, it's okay for me, that's good for me. So he goes, where do you want to go? So I name a place or whatever. A nice place, of course, because, you know, I'm not cheap. Um, and his music in his car just really sucked. Like, it sucked really bad. It was, like, old. Not super old, but too old to be, you know. You know how, like, stuff gets, like, a year old and then you want to hear something new? So I, I said, do you have any better CDs than this? I was kind of rude, y'all. And he was like, no. I was like, well, I don't like this music. And so he pulls over to... Back in those days, they had Soundwaves, which is like a place where you could buy CDs. And so he pulls over into the parking lot of Soundwaves and he goes in and he says, buy whatever you want. Buy whatever CD you want. I'm like, okay. So you know me, I'm greedy. I'm like, I'm picking up double discs, uh, collectors, hit, greatest hits and stuff like that. <laughs> I got Prince, greatest hits, the B-sides. I got Michael Jackson. I got uh, Maxwell, I got Brian McKnight. Yeah, I remember everything. I got Mariah Carey. I still remember everything I bought because we have still have some of those CDs and that's crazy, huh? Um, I got all those CDs, probably came out to $100 or something. And we went back in the car, 
popped in the CD. He had the top down. We was cruising. It was nighttime. We were in the nice part of the city. And it was just atmosphere. It was like, yeah, you know, you have to get the soundtrack to your life right, you know. So he was happy because he liked the music too, you know. He liked, everybody liked Michael Jackson. Everybody liked Prince, you know. <laughs> so we were jamming in the car and we got to the destination, which was this really nice club. Cost a lot of money to get in, and, you know exclusive whatever whatever drinks cost like ten dollars okay you can't be cheap to go there this is this is my test okay so it's, uh, it's set, uh, he's already trying to impress me so why not right so we go um park you got to pay for parking we walk got to go up the elevator because it's in top of a building and we we pay like it's like twenty dollars admission just to get in so he pays um then you uh you know, you got to get drinks. It's live music. It's really nice. Um, okay, y'all, I had to... I got to cut off. But, yes, yeah, so we were in the a little club. We were dancing. We were having a good time. Okay, so we left. We didn't stay there all night. So we wanted to go someplace else. And on the way out of the club, he's like... He was like really trying to get me. I don't know. He was really trying to impress me. He's like, do you want to go get your nails done? Do you do you need anything? I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> my, my nails are already done. I'm trying to say, you know. So I was like, no, you know, I'm ready to go out. I'm drinking. I'm ready to drink. You know, let's go. You know how you are when you're young. You're just like full of energy and you want, you want to go hit the next place. So we hit the next place and... It's like a karaoke bar. It's not the nicest place, but it's one of those like hole in the wall places that you know about. It has a karaoke bar, cheap drinks, um, you know, good music. So he had already impressed me. He already spent a bunch of money, but so I was good with that. But I wanted to go sing. I wanted to sound like a little sing a little bit, you know. I wanted to sing. So and I was feeling good. I was drunk, not really drunk, but like tipsy. Um, so we drove to this little karaoke place and. Um, we're sitting at the little table we're getting our drinks and oh my god my ex-boyfriend is up in there like seriously with another with with an ugly woman too this this make it even this is like this is just like law of attraction to the you know ooh, thank you okay. this is beautiful so this is beautiful this is the best part of it all so he's in there with this ugly lady okay ugly okay like ugly and no offense to ugly people, but this lady was not even ugly on a natural level. She made herself ugly. Like, she put a bunch of different colors on. She had crazy hair. She just was a work of ugliness, okay, because of her choice of attire, hair color, and such and such and such. Okay. <laughs> now, he's broke because that's why he's my ex, because he was broke and he never went anywhere. Um, and so I walk in with this guy who has a lot of money, you know, nicest car in the parking lot. You know, everybody could tell he had money because of the way he dressed, looked, talk. Okay. So like he stuck out like a, a sore thumb. So I was like, oh yeah, this is my date, whatever, <laughs> James. And this is, you know, such and such. My ex-boyfriend who was with another woman was ready to fight him like right up in there. With the woman. The woman got mad at him and started arguing with him. And then me and my uh, date left. And I didn't even get a chance to sing. So, um, I had put my song in. I was ready to sing. But I didn't get a chance to sing because old stupid was in there. Okay, so we left. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know he's going to be in there. Whatever, whatever. I really didn't know. Like, seriously. There's like, I didn't know. Um, I wasn't even thinking that he would be in there. Because... I hadn't seen him in months and months, right? So, he's like, oh, no big deal. Whatever, whatever. Let's, let's go somewhere else. So, then we go. I forgot where we went. Mm -hmm. Where did we go after that? I don't know. I can't remember. But we went somewhere else and had a few more drinks. And and then I was like, okay, well, you know, it was fun. It's time to go. Um, and so, he was like, okay, well, you have my card. Call me anytime. You know, I would love to see you again. And I'm like, okay, I will. So I go home and um, he didn't have my phone number because I didn't give him my phone number. So back in the old days, 
though we didn't have you know smartphones and stuff like that we couldn't just it would take forever to put your number in the phone so you just wrote it down and gave it on the card or whatever right because you had to push one to get a two one two times to get b y'all remember the, the old days so um i called him like two days later i gave him a day i called him two days later and i said hey it's me you know he's like yeah i was waiting on you to call uh what are you doing for lunch like he was already trying to take me out again for lunch and i'm like uh, i'm just waking up what am i doing for lunch <laughs> um and so i was like well i can meet you uh for dinner he's like, sure let's do it let's do it so we dated basically every day for two weeks okay we didn't we saw each other every day for two weeks after that so after two weeks he was like um you know he was trying to get some and i'm like mm, i don't i don't have sex outside of relationships okay so um i'm sorry he's like okay well then you know let's become a couple let you want to be my girlfriend da, 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 da. i'm like well <laughs> i'm like well i don't date guys that you know i don't i don't i wouldn't date a guy seriously unless they could do certain things for me and he's like what do you mean and this is where you have to I, this is where i dropped it on him that he, i needed him to pay all my bills okay <laughs> and so i was like oh god this is it <laughs> this is it okay so i was like well you know i need you know i need someone to take care of me i need someone to take care of my bills you know um if i'm gonna date them seriously and be attracted to them and feel like you know secure with them i need them to take care of my bills and he's like, oh, well, how much are your bills? And so I gave him the price. And he's like, oh, I can do that. That's not a problem. Don't worry about it. I can give you that. No problem. <laughs> I was like, okay. So we became a couple at first. And then I thought he was bluffing. I'm like, okay, he's just going to get some and be gone, right? So I, mm -mm. so I was like, okay, well, my car notes to do tomorrow. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know what? this is it again and then he he drives he's driving i'm thinking he's driving me back to my car because he's driving in that direction i'm like oh god he drives up to the atm and gives me the money and says here you go go pay your car note of course i told him my car note was twice what it was because you know I'm, so i paid up two <laughs> so i paid two months up okay this is how you do i'm teaching y'all okay so you pay two months up and then the next month when you get when you get the car note then you can go shop okay so um because <laughs> he's gonna give you double the car note so you always gonna have extra money okay so that's a little tip y'all so you tell him double the car note he'll give you double the car note you pay two car notes up the next car note you pay your car note you have you have the other half that he gave you because he thinks your car note is double and you go shopping okay so i did that <laughs> he still don't know to this day child he does not know that my car note was not that <laughs> but I think he would laugh he wouldn't be upset um so yeah he started paying all my bills um I, I was uh working and then he told me to quit my job he's like you know that job is not good for you I don't get to see you enough you know it's bad hours I'll take care of you quit I'm like okay I quit I quit right now you know I quit <laughs> So after that, I was just like, okay, now what do I do with my free time? Um, so eventually, uh, we moved in together about three months after we were dating. Uh, I moved into his apartment. He had a very nice condo on the lake. And, you know, uh, then I was like, you know, I, I was going to school at the time as well. Like I was also in school and working. Um, so I was like, well, I'm go I started something new because I quit my old job. I'm like, well, I need to do something else. So I started going back to school. And so my school was an hour away from his place. I'm like, I drove every day. And then I finally finished school. And then um I was like, well, the lease is up here, you know, let's move let's move downtown. So we moved downtown in a big high rise at the top. We were just living it up, like, you know. Um, 
anything I wanted, I could get it. Like, I just had to say the word. This is the kind of person that he was. Now, I keep telling y'all, he wasn't the most attractive person. Like, but he wasn't ugly. He was just not my type. My type used to be tall, handsome, model type, you know, suave, you know, just, that was my type. My husband does not look like that at all. Well, he's taller than me, but, um, you know, he's, he's, um, he's like, I guess he's a little bit too conservative and like he wasn't, not, not as far as political views, but he wore glasses, nice sweaters, nice, you know, he was just like a, what you would call a geek now. Like back then, geek chic was not the style. But he would be geek chic now, okay? Let's just say that. So he wore his glasses. He had his hair cut. Wore, like, you know, sweaters and stuff like that. But, you know, he's into technology. So he was a geek, actually. Okay? Um, <laughs> so that's the kind of guy he was. But back in the day, you had to be suave. You had to go tea, Nice eyebrows. The baby hairs. You know. That's the day that I learned that looks are not important anymore, okay? Is what somebody can actually contribute to you and make you better so while he was paying my car notes my bills and stuff i had a chance to go to school i had a chance to you know um get a second degree and he paid for my school he paid for my school y'all he paid for my school my second school and i had, i got a second degree and then i began to work in the field that i was um had the degree in and his friend owned a business that was in that field so he got me a job and I would only work like three nights a week you know um because you know it was not I didn't need the money I was just doing it to do something you know so after we got married I stopped working totally because we got married after I finished school and um stuff like that so we got married a couple months after that and I didn't have to work anymore and I was a housewife. <laughs> so basically, I met my husband through the law of attraction and being a gold digger. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody. I'm just saying it worked for me. I'm just saying it worked for me because I knew exactly what I wanted and I wasn't going to put up with anything less. And I was attracting it the whole time. I was, I was like, this is what I want. This is what's coming to me. I know this is going to be my life. I'm not going to be doing this. I'm not going to be working. I'm not going to work as a wife. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I want to be this. I want to be that. This was in my mind already, you know. So, of course, subconsciously, that's what's going to come to me. Something that can actually make that come true. You know, a person that's going to make that come true. Um, I didn't have any worries, fears, doubts because I was going to say no, 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 no if it wasn't what I wanted to hear, you know. I was in control. I was the controller of the situation, okay? Um, so that's why I have the husband that I have that takes care of me and da 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 um, Because that's what I attracted by the law of attraction. I said it. I, I said it. Look, I don't care if he's the most gorgeous man in the world. I want somebody to do this, this, and that for me. And that who I can raise a family with, who I can have kids with, who my kids can have a nice house cars go to good schools i want all that okay i want it all that's what i said and you know that's what that's what we're having you know that's what we're doing and it's important to know what you want in life so that it can come to you if you're not sure what you want if you don't know what you want if you just have no clue you just wait for something to show up and see if you like it or not you're going to get surprises you're not going to be in control you're going to have disappointment so it's very important to know what you want so when it comes you recognize it and you per, you know you act on it immediately okay um the moment i knew that he was gonna be my husband is when he got all those cds okay he didn't know me for an hour and he bought me a hundred dollars worth of cds um <laughs> because i didn't like his music and he never once flinched when i insulted him three four times that's the kind of man you want to marry okay when you can sit there and insult, insult somebody and look at him crazy and you know, ask him rude questions and he's still nice to you, that's the kind of man you marry, okay? Because that means he sees past your flaws, your emotion, and all that, and he can put up with you, okay? You need to marry a man that can put up with you, okay? Because most guys would have dismissed me in about two minutes, and that's how I know they weren't going to be the one.
okay? And a lot of guys are going to get up here, well, her husband's a simp. He's a simp. Well, if simp is having money, being able to take care of your family, wife, give your wife whatever she wants, give uh, their kids whatever they want, move in a nice neighborhood, have nice cars, then I guess he is a simp and whatever, okay? Um, <laughs> he's what I attracted, okay? I didn't attract somebody who thinks that they're all that, can't afford to take care of a family or a wife, got his hand out at rent time. I didn't marry that because that's not the kind of life I want, okay? I'm not putting anyone down for having that life, but that's not what I wanted. That's not what I was going to attract. That's not what I saw myself doing, okay? So, ladies, law of attraction. Make your list before you go out. Don't entertain anything that's not on that list, and you'll probably get what you're looking for too one day. It's going to walk right into your life. Okay, stay positive. Thumbs up if y'all agree on this. If y'all gonna try it, if it happened to you, it can happen to anyone. Basically, you just have to know what you want and don't settle. All right, I'll see y'all later. Bye.